this is Meredith Elliott Powell, and you know what time it is. It is time for another episode of Thrive, turning uncertainty into your greatest competitive advantage. I am hanging out here with a very special guest, Dave Sanderson. He is not only a leadership expert, but he is one of the last surviving um, passengers on the miracle of the Hudson. So again, Meredith Elliott Powell, it is time for Thrive. Here with my buddy, my partner, my special guest, Dave Sanderson. Dave, I have said you are a leadership expert. I have said that you are one of the last surviving passengers on the Miracle of the Hudson. But for those couple of people listening today that have not heard of you, what else do we need to know about Dave Sanderson? Well, thank you for the kind introduction, Meredith. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I've been in sales for 35 years. That's, uh, you know, I started back in 1986 selling copiers door to door <laughs> out of a van. And the, the, the code was, do not bring it, but don't bring that copier back in here. So I had to really learn sales in the streets. So I've been doing this for 35 years. And so I, I love sales. I think it's the, it's the most essential way to be able to not only drive revenue, but also impact other people's lives. And fortunately, I use a lot of the sales things that I learned, techniques and strategies I learned on that day on the Hudson River, where you had to communicate and you had to do all these some of the things we had to learn, to be able to get the outcome of, of not only survival, but having 100% survival, right? So, you know, I, uh, I'm very fortunate to do that. As you know, I'm a speaker, mm -hmm. I, uh, I do coaching, but more importantly, I, you know, I write books, but I just love to uh, impact people's lives and help them uh, take, attain whatever outcomes they're trying to get. Well, I really want to focus this show today on truly how sales has changed, leadership has changed, and what we need to do to thrive in an uncertain uh, marketplace. But before we get into that, I mean, I think that we need to talk about the elephant in the room. Tell us your story. Tell us what you were doing on the plane that day. And try to help us understand what that was like and why it became the miracle that it um, that it is that it was. Well, thank you, Meredith. So Here's a short version of a long story. I was coming back from a three-day business sales trip. I was in a sales meeting in Brooklyn, New York. And we started the day at 5 o'clock and we got done at 10. So we, I got to go home early, which is a very <laughs> rare occurrence in sales, right? You should stay till the last moment. So I got on the plane. I wasn't even scheduled to be on that plane. So wow. I got on the plane at uh, Canley. Uh, I was scheduled on the 5 o'clock flight, but nothing unusual. I mean, it was cold. It was snowing, but... If you've been in and out of New York, that's nothing new. And planes were delayed out of LaGuardia, and that's nothing out of the ordinary. But about 60 seconds after we took off, it's when I heard an explosion. And so then you knew something was going on, especially here in New York City. So you really hear what's going on. So all of a sudden, it gets eerily quiet, and you feel the plane turning, and you're like, okay, we're going back to the airport. But as we know now, he wasn't turning back to the airport. He was actually turning the other direction, flying over the you know, Hudson River and he barely, you know, crossed, we crossed over the George Washington Bridge when we really knew and I knew it was a very serious situation because he only cleared the bridge by roughly about 400 feet. Right. And right. That's, that's the moment. It's like, okay, this thing's going down and I may not have another shot. So, but basically, hopefully, you know, we know now that he got the plane down, but that was part one. Part two is when you now you have to get out of a plane that's sinking in ice cold water. Right. And that's when you had to incorporate all the skills because, you know, first half, you basically had to manage your mind. Second half is like, now i got to go. So that's when I think, you know, for me, you know, the mindset had to really change to go back to the lead. Because what happened on the right side of the plane, Meredith, with a lot of people don't know, is there were no crew on the right side of the plane. Wow. All the crew went out to the left side of the plane. So the right side of the plane had to be managed and led by people with zero experience. And that's when you find out how well, leadership is not about that situation. It's about how you lead people. Yeah. And that was a really a, not only a distinguishing factor, but a learning experience for me. It's like you don't have to know everything about everything. But as long as you know how to lead people, instruct, communicate effectively, get them to take action, that and that's all sales. Yeah. That's, all, that's what we do in sales. So that's pretty much, I mean, that's a very short version of what happened that day. Why did the crew go out the left side and you went out the right side? So what, what happened was the, the crew member that was supposed to be on the right side got injured in the back of the plane on impact. Oh, Her leg got cut open and they had to take her out the right front, front of the plane on the left. So that left no one on the right side of the plane. And so it was amazing how leaders stepped up and how people really, and it's amazing when, you know, we talk about influence. Yeah. Right, sales. Well, 
when you got people in a state of shock, state of uncertainty, as we talk about, right? You really got to pull out some, you know, pull out your influential strategies. And part of that is getting people to move their bodies. And that's one of the things that I did is I just, because I've been with Tony Robbins for 10 years, I was, he mentored me for those times when I was head of security. I usually use the things he said, he taught me how to, how to get people to move their bodies and all of a sudden wake them up and take instruction. It was an amazing experience. You know, I mean, I could, I could talk about, I could talk about this all day and let's kind of, let's kind of integrate this into the, into the rest of the interview, because, you know, certainly um, we're, we're not flying over the Hudson river and landing in ice cold water, but for some business owners today, it certainly feels like that. I mean, it, it just feels like you get one toe forward and you go seven feet back. You know, when I started writing and talking about uncertainty, it was three, four or five years ago. And every year it just seems to go on greater steroids. So, and a lot of times I feel like our customers are in a state of shock. They're in a state of, if nothing else, they're stuck, right? So where do you start? What are what are some of the biggest things that you need to begin to get people to feel comfortable? And how did you do that on that flight? We're in uncertain times right now. Yeah. And as this keeps getting over and over, going and going, because one of the things I talk about, Meredith, is the last two years, it was just not about COVID. It was yeah. about social justice. It was about the election. It was about police. I mean, it just kept stacking on all these people, these business people. And a lot of them don't know where to go. So one of the things I always want to make sure that they know I'm on, the, I'm on their side. I am on their side. And, you know, I think people are looking for heroes right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've always strived to be the hero to my client. And so, you know, when I, I tell them, you know, I'm the guy you're going to call at two o'clock in the morning. You know, I will make it happen. Trust me. I will make it happen. And that's how I really turned my career around when I started taking that mindset of being the hero to my client. And I think yeah. I always start with that. And, it always begins with a relationship. And, you know, I, I don't do much prospecting anymore because I've got relationships now that people I could call somebody and they know that I'll be the guy, you know, there for them when all stuff hits the fan. Yeah. You know what that makes me think of when I think about being a hero for the client? I think the first thing people need is confidence, right? Somebody showing up who says, I've got this. Even if I don't have all the answers, even if I don't know exactly what to do, you can count on me to be there and to figure it out. And that's a great first step with clients. Yeah, I I actually had that situation happen yesterday and a client called me and he got a call from his CFO in a panic. Give it to me. Let me handle it. And I had to do what I had to do on my side, but handle. And now he looks at me like, you know, I know Dave's going to be there when all stuff is the fan because, you know, as we all know, in sales, it doesn't just go smoothly all the time. There's <laughs> yeah. hiccups, and you got to bring certainty to your client. Clients yeah. want to be, I really think clients want to be led right now yeah. because they are in a state of uncertainty. So if you, the person who can give the most certainty are the ones who probably get the most sales. So what does that look like when you first yeah. show up with a client? Or let's even start before that. I mean, like, you know, you're in a situation where you, you're you not prospecting much anymore, but a lot of people who are listening to us are prospecting. Right. So what I love about this conversation is it isn't about the product you sell. It's what you're putting out there first. What does that look like and how do you show up and how does, how does a customer sense or a prospect sense that you're different? Well, thanks for that question. Because one of the things I always start with, Meredith, is, you know, I, I've really become a, I know I'm not a master, but a focus on what modality does that person reside in? Mm. Um, both visual or kinesthetic. And I learned that by A, going to LinkedIn. That's a great resource. B, calling in and hearing how they talk or talking to somebody in that organization or a third party. And once I understand what modality they're in, that, that's how I approach it. So there might be an instance where I approach somebody with a little video. There mm. might be an instance. If they're an audio person, I would definitely make it an audio call them. But if they're a kinesthetic, it's more of a writing, a feeling kind of thing. So that is the first step I always do when I approach a new client is find out what modality they reside in, primary, primary modality, and communicating with that modality. That's an instant connection, instant rapport. Nice, nice. What do you think are some of the... Um, uh, you know, as the as the marketplace has, you know, has really shifted. I mean, I'm working with clients that you've got to be the same way. I mean, their supply chain 
issue is a, it's just a disaster. I mean, I've got one client where the sales team is going gangbusters, but they can't, you know, they can't get a supply. You've got others out there that are worried about interest rates and possible inflation and where there'll be a, sl- a slowdown. What do you think some of the biggest challenges or mistakes sales professionals and or leaders really, I mean, I love your expertise on leaders are making today. Yeah, I think one of the biggest mistakes is they, they go in with their own agenda initially. Mm. And, you know, I mean, we all get pressure. We all have pressure from management. Yes, and we've had this for years. But I think a lot of, especially younger people that I work with better than probably you work with and speak with likewise, they're driven, 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 driven. They're achievement driven. They, they're getting these quotas. They, they think it's all about getting the number. But they got to flip it on the head and say, you know, it's really about how I can serve first coming from right. a servant leadership position. So that's what I say. I mean, I'm giving you a perfect example of what happened two years ago. I was in sales um, and COVID hits. And I, I was working primarily in healthcare and COVID hits. So, I mean, it was like a double whammy, right? Like, okay, right. what are going to do, right? So I took a different approach. I What I did is I started calling the, the CIOs and some of the CFOs of the companies I was dealing with. And the first question I'd ask was, how can I help you? Right. Well, right. And, you know, and, and some people just take that as a lark. But one guy said, I, I'll tell you how you can really help me. I need to get masks in here because I can't get mass supply chains down. I said, give me a couple minutes. So I worked my connections and found him how he could source masks out of Indiana and got him a million masks in, in 72 hours. And all of a sudden, my name got out there. Right. And I yeah. wasn't Dave, the sales guy. I was Dave. I'm getting your mask guy. Right. And I solved a problem. Totally outside my world. Mm-hmm. That's how you, you make a raving fan out of somebody. That's, to this day, he, he called me. I have a call with him this afternoon again. Yeah, you know, I call that urgent need. Yeah. And um, and when you got that, this is such good advice, audience. Really listen to this. What Dave just told you is when you go into a client, whatever it is that they are talking about, focus there. Right. They they couldn't listen to Dave until he found them masks. That people can't hear past their past their urgent need, right? You know, what is some of your advice for your clients that are dealing with supply chain issues? I mean, I think that is just such a challenge right now. Yeah, and I've lived in supply chain now for almost 30 years. It's and and we I think a lot of us who've been in this world of supply chain and systems knew this was coming. I, I wrote about this yesterday on LinkedIn about the difference between networking and connecting. Mm-hmm. So many people want to network with me. I say, I really want to connect with people. So, yeah, I think the supply chain issue right now is a real problem. And I think, the, the and especially in healthcare, is a yeah. major problem right now. So I think, you know, the way I approach it is, you know, I've got to understand the whole world of supply chain from their perspective, where they're going and the problems they're having, whether it's at shore in Los Angeles, getting in the port. And if I can understand, at least I can articulate the potential options or ways that the other other options. And I tell you what, chief supply chain officers who have this problem will listen to you. They will Mm -hmm. take your call. They will sit down. If you can give them some advice or give them a different direction, they will sit and talk to you. And that's, I tell you that, I think that's for young, younger people. I think so many people, Mary, you probably see it too. Just jump right into the sale. Yeah. You know, it's funny. And, and so often, um, is what drives me crazy about sales training is that they train it all the same way. And you're either taught, um, you know, you jump to the sale too quickly or you're taught this relationship building. And you have to pay attention to who's in front of you. Nothing drives me crazier than when I call Verizon and they start asking me about how my weekend is. You know, I'm I'm like, I didn't call you for that. I called because my phone doesn't work. I'm six calls behind. Could you fix this? And then I'll talk about anything, you know, that, that, you know, that you want to talk about. Then I had another guy when I called Verizon who I had still had a problem and he just was talking to me about upselling me something. Oh my gosh, it drives me crazy. I mean, you, you need to really, you know, you need to really listen to people, but you know, the, this thing about supply chain, if I'm understanding you correctly, because I think it is such good advice. If you're going to go in and deal with clients, you need to understand supply chain and you need to understand your client's supply chain. Like 
I was just working with a client and their supply chain is, is desperately broken. But one of the challenges with the supply chain is it's kind of amazing it ever worked. There's so many different countries involved in their supply chain that they were just kind of hanging by a thread anyway. And all it took was one little thing not to go right. And the whole thing would, you know, would, would cascade down. So I imagine in those types of situations, I mean, I just took a roll up our sleeves. Let's get to work. I don't know the answer, but we'll try to figure this out together approach. That's exactly right. I think what COVID did was expose the supply chain. Yes. If nothing else, it exposed it. How many people's supply chains were broken? They never paid attention because candidly, the materials management and supply chain people and organizations are usually the lowest looked at people. Yeah. You know, it's events or IT or somebody, HR. But these guys are the lifeblood, right? Mm-hmm. The gals, guys and gals are lifeblood of how to drive revenue. And what's the primary reason we're doing this? Yes, increased stock prices, yes, but driving revenue. So if you can help somebody, help them, with, you know, hey, get the product so they can drive revenue, you're their hero. You will be their hero for life. And I, I mean, you're here on a really topic that I, I'm passionate about, as you can tell, because yeah, so many years people just say, you know what? We've got supplies. What's the big deal? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You know, you just sort of look and, um, and realize that, that, you know, that things show up, which kind of leads me to another topic, a really good salesperson. And obviously you are one because you were way ahead of this would be helping their clients get ahead of their challenges. They would have seen the supply chain problem coming and start to tip the client off, you know. So what are some of the other, you know, challenges that maybe you see coming down the road as we look at this uncertain marketplace where salespeople can position themselves to be a hero with their clients? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I mean, I, I'll give you, for instance, and I'll give you a response. My current mentor's name is Don, and he he is this is his topic, how he can see the next two steps ahead. And what he did, and I'll give you this, and I'll answer the question. Yeah. When COVID hit, he's an entrepreneur. He was in IT. But he bought a plant in Athens, Georgia. It made, I forget, it's kind of a metal product. Shifted on its head to make sanitizer. Well, hand sanitizer. There's a lot of people doing that. Right. But what he did is he bought the plant and said, I'll guarantee in 72 hours you'll have this on your pile on your doorstep. And by goodness, no one else could do that. Right. 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 So he, he, he saw two steps ahead. The problem wasn't hey, the product. The problem was getting it to the person. The yeah. Per- so my response is, I what I always look at is the distribution. You know, I well, the product, you know, that, that there's challenges with China. Yes, we should be onshoring more than we are. But that's for labor purposes. I think that's not happening. Regulations are not happening. So the key thing is, how can I help with your distribution? Mm-hmm. Right? How can I get you the product in a more effective way? And sometimes that's a real that's a real hard topic to, to handle. But like I did with the mask, I, I use my connections. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to not network, but connect. Yeah. Because when you get, as you know this, Meredith, when you get all stuff's breaking loose, you want to be able to call that lady or that gentleman up, say, I need your help. And they can make that thing happen for you which makes you look like a hero. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the other thing I think I hear you saying too, which is one of the mistakes I think salespeople make is they stay away from the tough subjects and you need to jump smack into the middle of those tough subjects, even if you don't know how to solve them. I mean, I I look at supply chain. I look at the fact that, you know, our customers are now starting to decide Will the market slow down? If it does, when will it slow down? How do I kind of secure myself in in those situations? We're not dealing with a single customer right now that doesn't have a labor issue. So rather than running away from those issues, kind of get in the center of those issues. Would you agree? I totally agree. I think, you know, I, now I've been doing this now for 36 years. So if I would say when I was starting, I would, not, I would have run away as quickly as I possibly could. Yeah, right. Right? But, you know, with... One of the things about the years is you get wisdom. Yeah. And, you know, young people come to me all the time and want my wisdom. I said, you can't get wisdom. You have to go through the experiences and you got to be able to you know, relate and understand. So I think with years comes wisdom. So now with the wisdom, you can now understand how somebody may think. Right? Yeah. And why and, and anticipate, you know what? This guy or gal is 42 years old. They're, they're in the middle of it. They've never seen this stuff before. 
By the way, I've seen this stuff before back in 1970s when we had a recession, right? Yeah. And I remember we couldn't get gas. Yeah. So, you know, now we're the other option. Can we solve your problem? So mm -hmm. it's all about solving somebody's problem and helping them drive, drive to their personal, like you said, perfectly. It's about what's important right now, your urgency. Yeah. You know, solve that and you'll, you'll have that next step. Yeah. You solve that. You focus on what the customer needs and they'll buy your product. All of that will come, will, you know, will come eventually. But, you know, so much of what you've talked about is the importance of connection and having that network. I mean, you know, so often when we're faced with a problem, our first response is what should we do? And I always say your first response should be who should you call? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that there's no problem that you face that somebody else hasn't already faced it and hasn't already started to um, to figure it out. And um, so what is some of your advice around building a network in today's virtual world? That's a great, great question because people ask me all the time, what, what do I spend most of my time? And it's really finding the who for the how. Mm. I spend so much time finding those people, right? Those who's that I can solve the house for somebody else. And I started that very with me personally because I had a lot of, well, of how am I going to get this stuff done? And yeah. I'm not good at a lot of things. I'm good at some things. There's a lot of things that, like spreadsheets I hate. Who is the person or people or organization that has fixed these problems before? I'm, I'll make sure I connect with them some way. I'll work the connection some way. So then I'll hoof my house. So I tell people, I saw I, I saw people's hoof for hows. That's what I do. Yeah. Right. I, I I love that right now. And, you know, and I think that um, I think virtual is a great way to connect um, with people. I've been amazed that I just had somebody reach out to me this morning that saw me speak at an event and said, I'd really love to have you talk with my boss. Could I set up a 15 minute chat um, with you? And uh, and I said, absolutely. You know, please, yep. please do. So the who for the how is a great thought. I mean, I think that. Um, Asking yourself who first, who could I work with? Who could I reach out to? Who could I connect to? It may not be that first connection you make. I mean, I may reach out to you with a problem and you don't know how to solve it, but you're going to connect me with somebody else who can move me a little bit closer to that solution. That's what happened to the mask. I yeah. had two connections. I took me two connections to find these masks in Indiana. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was like Nirvana. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was like, I, I mean, I was getting flooded with phone calls because this was a problem everybody had and no yeah. one, everybody was looking to go to China with, with a K95 mask. And there was, you know, it was a 14 to 21 day ship, right? Minimum. And plus you got all the regulations you had to go through and now they have onshore. So that's what you said is perfect because that's exactly where if yeah. you're a top salesperson, I'm looking for the who's for the how for people. And all of a sudden you're the connector and you're the one that's making it happen for them. Yeah. And, you know, you do get that reputation, right? Which is the reputation you want where everybody says, I don't know, call Dave and ask him. I mean, and then then people are coming to you. You know, it is hard to believe, but we are just about to the end of this podcast. Um, I, I want I like to close out with two um, two questions okay. and you can answer them either way. Okay. Number one, what is your greatest advice for any entrepreneur, sales professional, leader out there who wants to thrive in uncertainty? And then certainly, how do we get a hold of you? Well, thank you. Um, first, I this is the advice I would give, and I really never share this a lot, is I measure myself backwards. And what oh. is, well, I really learned this. It came to me last year, swam with the Navy SEALs, went back in the Hudson River. And I had swims and not swum since 1979. And I had a focusing on that gap, right? How, I mean, how am I going to get it done? I'm doing the same thing two days from now, Meredith, but this year I focused on, well, look how much I've gained this year, this year. Look how much I measure myself backwards. And I think yeah. if leaders and salespeople do that, look, listen, every day is not going to be pixie dust and sunshine. But if you measure yourself backwards, say, you know how much I've gained? Your mindset changes. And all of a sudden, yeah. once you get your mindset changed, you're in a mode of serving leadership. So that would be my biggest advice. Uh, and second, if someone wants to contact, I would love to just go to my website, Dave Sanderson speaks.com LinkedIn is Dave, Davis Sanderson. Check me out as Meredith. You know, I, I honor Meredith because congratulations on your recent award. I saw nice. that it was amazing. And, uh, you're somebody we all strive to be. So, uh, just check me out. And if I can serve you, my new book's called from turmoil to triumph. You see it here in the back. It's being, uh, we're, you know, going out here pretty shortly. So love to check it out. When is the book going to be released, Dave? 
it was it's on Amazon right now, but we're going to do a major launch in September. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, there's a, there's a reason behind that. So, but if you go on Amazon now, you can get a copy, and I'd be honored if someone would check it out. All right. Well, I really encourage people to make sure that link is in the show notes. I'm certainly going to go get my copy and uh, read it, leave you, uh, leave you a review because the, the wealth of information you have is really, is really just incredible. I love everything that you've said here today. And thank you so much for coming on and for being a guest. And thank you, audience. You have been incredible. I have loved the comments lighting up the chat. Uh, we're going to have go to uh, DaveSandersonSpeaks.com to find out more about Dave. You really need to get in and hear his amazing story, not only of the work that he's done, but in just in his career and the things that he has come through. And then don't forget, join us right back here next week for another episode, another guest, and another powerful set of strategies that you need to turn all of this uncertainty into your greatest competitive advantage. We'll see you next week. <music>